I have no comment. Ask the NFL. They have all the answers. Dave is telling that to ESPN. Dan Orlovsky now here with us. Good morning, Dan. Good to have you here. And I'll start with you. Uh, how do you think the Raiders are handling this? Uh, Mark Davis wise, passively aggressive in an embarrassment. Silence says a lot more than you think. You don't get to run from this. There's 32 of you. There's 31 of you. The Packers don't have an owner. This is the opportunity to make it very clear the things that you stand for and the things that you don't stand for. You should be speaking about what just happened to your organization. This is the first time ever that a situation like this has unfolded, or at least in my time that I can remember in the NFL, that a situation like this in regards to your head coach has happened. You don't get to be passively aggressive about this. You don't get to not talk about this and answer the difficult questions. There's one of 31 in the world like this. And as the leader of that organization and the person who owns that organization, he should be standing there like a grown man and answering those questions and not passing that off. Now, that being said, Mike Mayock did an incredible job. Their general manager, I thought, did a great job yesterday of standing there and handling things that, like a man, handling things the right way, being very communicative, being a leader, um, answering the difficult questions, talking about players like Carl Nassib and where they were and what they potentially would be going for or going through. And I think that shows great leadership. And I think that shows the type of guy that Mike Mayock is. And so he's handled it well. And the last thing I'd say, Molly, is this. For the guys in that locker room, um, this is the moment to be a brother. You know, this is the moment. You can't say all the cliche sayings about sports and football of, oh, that's my brother, and uh, no matter what, we'll do things together, and yeah. it takes all of us when things are easy or when things I don't want are good, and then when this situation presents itself, not go be there for your brother. And I think for a guy like Carl Nassib, who is very much so, I would imagine, alone in this situation or feeling alone in this situation, every one of those teammates should go and make sure that they're there for him. And so if your owner's not going to take leadership of the situation, Mike Mayock has, and I'm hoping that the players will as well. Appreciate your take, Dan. And let's, let's remember that Carl Nassib uh, took a personal day. He wasn't there yesterday. Uh, because he needed a personal day to digest because he knows he's going to get inundated with questions about John Gruden's emails, yeah. uh, you know, and basically how he was lamenting, saying that the commissioner, Roger Goodell, shouldn't be courage, encouraging then uh, Rams coach Jeff Fisher to hire queers, the draft queers. That's, how, that's what he said, and he said, it, obviously, it was very, very derogatory, so we have to take that into consideration, and there's a lot for Carl Nassib to address, and I can appreciate the fact that he took a personal day Having said all of that, Dan Olavsky, and again, put Dan up so I can see him while I'm talking to him, please. Um, here's the deal, Dan. Here's what I think, and I appreciate your take about uh, uh, Mark Davis. Because here's what his silence said. It wasn't exactly silence. He said the NFL. And what was that quote again, y'all? It's the, uh, ask the NFL. I have no comment. They ask have, the NFL. They, they have all have the answers. all the answers. Yeah. Very glib, very sarcastic, relatively dismissive. Yeah. That's what he's doing. You know what that said to me? They made me get rid of John Gruden, y'all. I didn't want to do it. Mm. He basically yeah. told yeah. on himself. Right. Mark Davis basically told himself. He basically said, after seeing those emails, okay, and recognizing the things that he had said over a seven-year period, right. I still would have kept them if they would have let me. That's basically what Mark Davis is confessing to. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, y'all. That's yeah. what it comes down to. And when you take that into consideration, where do we go with that? Here's where we go with that. That culture that we were talking about, that culture that we religiously lament, where there's no minority ownership other than Kim Pagula in Buffalo and Shad Khan, who's, Pakistan, who, yep. who's from Pakistan, owning the Jacksonville Jaguars, you have no representation. You certainly don't have any black representation. I can tell you that much in an ownership position. There's plenty of people with money that would love to own an NFL team that happen to be black, okay? And you haven't invited them into that good old boys club. People forget that. When it comes to ownership in the NBA, in the NFL, Major League Baseball, etc., it yep. doesn't matter how much money you have. They have to invite you in. They have to let you in. And it takes me back to years ago when Commissioner Stern, God rest his soul, was the, was the commissioner of the NBA, and you had 
Larry Bird, Dan Olofsky, he had a group of guys, like 14 or 15 mm -hmm. guys, uh, Dan and Molly, and he wanted to buy the Charlotte franchise. Yeah. And Larry Bird came in there with the group. And you know what? We, we've we got this going on, and he's Larry Bird and what have you. And they had to come up with the money. And they were being interviewed by the Board of Governors and what have you, and, you know, Jerry Colangelo obviously had a connection with Bob Johnson, the former head mm -hmm. of BET. Right. Bob Johnson rolls up into that meeting because they give him an opportunity to be in that door. He said, gentlemen, I appreciate everything that everybody says that we know of the great Larry Bird and what he means to the NBA. But last time I checked, this was a financial transaction. And here is my portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> he said, what, what do y'all, well, who y'all want me to cut the check to? And they sold it for $300 million, which that group couldn't come up to. The NBA was progressive and forward-thinking, but more so they were also about what are your qualifications and do you merit owning, do you, do you warrant owning this franchise? The NFL has right. to let you in. And when you see a Mark Davis sounding like that and you think about some of the other things we've heard coming out of the mouths of owners with the whole Colin Kaepernick situation and everything else in between, then you see what we've been saying about the National Football League, which is why I go to Derek Carr. And I say, Derek Carr, no. You don't have the right to mess with people's private emails. But this case was different. They weren't in John Gruden's private emails. They were investigating the Washington football franchise. Yeah. Sure. And while looking into the franchise, Bruce Allen, the former president there, just so happened to be emailing John Gruden through the company account. Yeah. And that's how they discovered John Gruden's private emails because for him it was private. His account right. was private. Yeah. But Bruce Allen's was not. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.